This is Steve Fowkes welcoming you to Part 5. This is where we will talk about fat burning systems in great detail. Why such detail? Give me a minute to explain. There are a lot of different kinds of people in the world who think in different ways. Some are practical, others are dreamers. Some think first, others feel first. Some analyze, others intuit. Some people accept easily. Others are skeptics. This presentation is slanted to skeptics. It may, therefore, be somewhat tedious to most listeners. For this I apologize. But it is also for doctors. Your physicians cannot afford to accept therapeutic claims at face value. So this presentation must provide detail that your doctor will respect. It must also provide sufficient detail that, if your doctor dismisses it, you will have the confidence to go elsewhere to get the medical support you need. Ketone fuels are produced by the mobilization and metabolism of fat. In a healthy person, about 80% of the ketone fuel produced is hydroxybutyrate and about 20% is ketobutyrate. No acetone is produced. But in the unhealthy, this ratio can become disturbed in favor of ketobutyrate, which increases the risk of acetone generation. And if the utilization of ketones is impaired by lack of use of this pathway for decades, ketobutyrate levels can rise sufficiently to cause acetone generation. Acetone is not good to have around. It is not a fuel. It is not metabolized. It can participate in cross-linking reactions and it can only be gotten rid of by outgassing through the lungs, which causes acetone breath. There are two testing systems that can be used for assessing the presence of ketone fuels. The inexpensive urine test strips, available without a prescription through your neighborhood pharmacy, do not detect hydroxybutyrate, but do detect ketobutyrate. They also react with acetone, which provides a false elevation of the reading. So it is a good idea to have somebody in your life who can tell you if your breath starts to smell like acetone. Or you can just stay away from the strongest readings by a milder program of carbohydrate restriction. The ketone fuels produced by being in ketosis have additional health benefits. First, for most body tissues, they are a preferred fuel over glucose by roughly a factor of 10. The heart, for example, strongly prefers ketone fuels. In rodents suffering from congestive heart failure, there is a 50% increase in heart pumping power within 30 minutes of ketone administration. Ketone fuels appear to become increasingly favored during the developmental process and may be the key to graceful aging. There may be a close relationship between the ability of ketones to promote differentiation and prevent de-differentiation which has potential implications to cancer therapy and may account for the therapeutic benefits of fasting in cancer therapy. And lastly, despite countless decades of propaganda to the contrary, the brain is capable of deriving 50% of its energy needs from ketone fuels. This adjustment takes about two weeks. Getting into ketosis is relatively simple. Since fat burning systems are the backup power generating system, an inadequacy of carbohydrate fuels is sufficient. Although fasting certainly induces ketosis and may be useful for short periods of time, it is hardly necessary to go to such extremes. There are two low carb diets to consider. The Atkins diet, which is high in protein and moderate in fat, and the Ezrin diet, which is moderate in protein and high in fat. Due to the liabilities of excessive protein, the Ezrin diet is probably much preferred in middle-aged and elderly individuals, particularly when the fat component is rich in short and medium chain triglycerides, like when coconut oil is used as a dietary staple. Although butter and human breast milk do contain medium chain triglycerides, the most concentrated sources are coconut oil and palm oil. Despite the government-sponsored propaganda that these are dangerous, 
These oils are much safer than the polyunsaturate oils grown by U.S. vegetable oil producers. The only vegetable oil you should consider safe for unlimited consumption is olive oil, and that does not include imported olive oils that are adulterated by non-olive oils before they are imported. Personally, I use only estate bottled olive oils from California for long chain fats. I also rely upon purified MCT oil for increasing my dietary MCT content. I like the taste of butter, which is only 5% MCT. But by mixing butter and MCT oil 50-50, I get a butter-like source of fat that tastes like butter, has the same MCT content as coconut oil, and is spreadable straight out of the refrigerator. Ketosis is also facilitated by mitochondrial nutrients. Ketosis can be metabolically inefficient when it has not been activated for decades. Body fat deposits can contain toxins that can be released when fat gets mobilized. And trans fats and conjugated fats from partially hydrogenated vegetable oils can sabotage the fat-burning enzyme systems. If your body fat is not clean, it may take a while to burn out the gunk. But with regular ketosis, going into and out of ketosis, the fat-burning mechanisms can become highly efficient. As cellular utilization of ketones becomes more efficient, less ketone spills into the urine. So, over time, you will tend to see less color on the test strips for any given degree of ketosis. Although most of the cells of the body are fully capable of burning fatty acids independently, ketosis is characterized by the liver breaking fats down into ketone fuels and exporting them wholesale to the rest of the body through the bloodstream where they are absorbed by peripheral organs and converted into energy. This metabolic detail is from Van Italy's and Neufert's Nutrition Reviews article from 2003. It is provided only for those few viewers who have an interest in such detail. Everybody else should immediately advance to the following discussion of the antioxidant defense system. The yellow energy system in the center of the diagram outputs NADH on the left side. This couples to NADPH, which is the primary pool of reducing power for biological systems. This reservoir of reducing power is used to recycle antioxidants, particularly vitamin C and glutathione, which take the brunt of oxidative stress to the cell. The glutathione antioxidant requires special mention due to its dual role as a mercury detoxicant. The dynamic balance between glutathione and mercury is the key element that regulates the earliest stages of Alzheimer's pathology. There is also evidence that mercury glutathione balance is involved in autism, vaccination crises, and sudden infant death syndrome. This is the end of part five. Please advance to part six at this time.